before we actually start using Stata, I want to talk to you about six very important steps that you should follow if you want to do high level quantitative research. The first step is to clearly define the objective of your research. I'm specifically talking about your research question. This is the question that will guide and center your research, and if it's not clear and focused, you sure won't be able to find a good answer to it. Well, here are some questions you should ask yourself when defining your research topic. Is my question feasible to answer? Is it specific enough? Will I have access to the information I need in order to answer it? And most importantly, keep in mind that no matter what your area of research is, a clear and well-defined question is crucial if you want to obtain reliable results. Well, once you have defined your research question, you will be able to decide on the sample and the relevant variables you need to answer this question. Also, you will know where you should look for your data, how you will collect it, and who does it refer to. Then, the next step is to actually collect the data. Well, this may sound obvious, but it's not uncommon to see people start here, collecting their data, and only then try to come up with a research question. In fact, it may be useful to do this if you have not defined your question yet and want to make sure there's data available to answer it. But this could also lead to a lot of unnecessary work. Also, uh, regarding data sources, it's important to remember that there are two main types of data, primary data and secondary data. Well, primary data is when the researcher or her team collect or observe the data themselves. So let's say you run an experiment or you collected data through questionnaires you designed yourself and you interviewed people. This is called primary data. On the other hand, secondary data is when the actual collection of data is carried out by somebody else, like uh, an international organization, such as the UN or the World Bank, for example, or a research center. Well, whatever the source is, if you were not the one to collect it, it is considered secondary data. And secondary data is actually the most common kind of data because it's very expensive and time consuming to collect data. So a lot of people just use uh, secondary data, data from other sources and the research, and that's totally fine. Well, when you are done with this step, you probably have a ton of data sets or just scattered data from various sources, but you have to make sure that it's useful for you. So the fourth step is to actually code, edit, and clean the data. And by cleaning your data, I mean you should ensure that its values make sense or conform to some set of rules. For example, if you have a variable called seasons of the year, let's say, you want to make sure it has one of four values, winter, spring, summer, and fall. So if you see a value like 36 or blue, it doesn't make sense and you should figure out what the problem is and fix it. So it's very important that you do this before doing any actual data analysis. So, well, let me warn you that this is usually the most time consuming and for most researchers, myself included, the most tedious step. Yes, it will take a lot of time. It's gonna be a pain, but it's really something that you should do. You can't really skip this step. Then the fifth step is the actual data analysis. This is where this course will help you, and that's why I highlighted this step. As the name of the course says, I wanted to make it as applied as possible and make sure that we would focus on using the software, Stata, and learning its functionalities, rather than getting our heads around complicated data sets. For this reason, throughout this course, we'll be using some example data sets that are already clean so that you can really learn the functionalities of Stata and not be so worried about understanding what the data is. Sometimes we'll also be using some data sets that come preloaded in Stata, and I will show you how you can find them in the software. Um, so, okay, so you follow these five steps. What next? What is the last step? Well, the last step is to actually present the results to your, peer, to your peers. So once you have done all these steps, you want to present your results. This is when you write your article, your research paper, your report, whatever it is, to show others the information you were able to obtain, how it relates to your hypothesis, and what kind of hypothesis uh, questions do you come up for your research, uh, responses I mean, you come up for your research question. Well, 
the main point of this video is just to show you that knowing your theory is not enough if you can't properly use a data analysis software. State is a powerful tool which you can use to perform a wide range of data analysis and enable other researchers to replicate your results, which is something essential in any field of science.